from Hollywood, it's the Tom Micah Show. I love it. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacker or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. I got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Brian writes in. Brian says, Tom, I was called an a hole today, and I have you to thank for it. I had lunch with a longtime female friend who happens to be pregnant. Not my seed. She was telling about a train ride she had a few weeks ago where she was forced to stand because no one would give up their seat. I told her, I wouldn't have given up my seat to a lady I didn't know just because she was pregnant either. She looked at me in amazement and called me an a-hole. I told her, look, it's not my problem. She's pregnant because of her choice. I continued by telling her I would give my seat to a blind person, a disabled person, or maybe even an effed up elderly person, because such a condition is not a choice. She still called me an a-hole, and I couldn't be prouder. Thanks, Pops. That's from Brian. Brian, I am proud of you because I couldn't have said it better myself. In fact, I think I have said exactly what you told your female friend. We can get into why you have a female friend another day. But... uh you know, here in L.A., public transportation is uh, a rumor. <laughs> you know. You know what they always say in L.A.? Your housekeeper takes the bus. I mean, really, the vast majority of people drive cars, even if they're beaters. And the people who ride buses or ride our cute little 12-stop subway or whatever it is, <laughs> uh, those are the people who absolutely can't even afford a car. They are... Uh, that That is the transportation of last resort here in Southern California. Yes, I know some of you ride the blue line or the red line or some of you ride the gold line. Yes, I know. The green line. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and uh, I do not see why anybody would give up their seat for somebody who's pregnant. It doesn't make any sense to me. It's not my problem. Uh, the, the letter writer is exactly right. It's not my problem. Just like I don't see why they have parking spaces for pregnant women. Ridiculous. They need the exercise. I don't see why I would ever be expected to give up my seat for a pregnant woman, and I never would. It's not my kid. It's not my wife. It's not my girlfriend. It's not my problem. I paid the same amount to get on the train she did. Tell you what. If you're uh, if you're traveling for two, maybe you need to pay two fares, and then you can have a reserved seat. Why should give up, I give up my seat to you on a bus, on a train, anywhere? Why should I do that? Now I do travel on the road, and I do use public transportation in places like uh, I was in Chicago last summer. I was in New York several times last year. And I was in Europe. And public transportation is uh, very much a part of everyday life in places like Rome or Paris, Barcelona. Yeah, it's everywhere. And people use it. 
And it's uh, people from uh, every walk of life and every income level. People use public transportation. But I don't see why I owe a pregnant woman a seat. And by the way, there was a period of time in this country when you were expected to give your seat up to any woman. Old women, young women, pregnant women, women who are not pregnant. It was just considered to be the right thing to do. You know, women demanded equality in this country, and I'm America's original feminist. I treat women equally to men. That is why I want them to pay their own rent, buy their own dinner, register for the draft, and stand up if they're the last ones to get in a subway train or on a bus. That's equality, girls. Enjoy it. You wanted it. You got it. And I am uh, showing what a feminist I am by not getting up and showing you any favoritism when you get on the bus or train. I also won't let you go ahead of me in the supermarket or at Costco. I've had pregnant women try to push past me in, like, Costco or Trader Joe's. They want to get ahead of me, and, uh, you know, they, they kind of shrug and kind of point to their protruding bellies. Like, that's the reason I should let them go ahead? Absolutely not. Not doing it. And I don't think it's unreasonable. I don't think the letter writer is unreasonable. He may be an a-hole, and I congratulate him for it. But what he's doing makes absolute sense. And what I'm doing makes absolute sense, don't you think? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. I think I must do penance tonight for talking to you today. Because years ago, I thought you were the seat of Satan. And, uh, and I've come around. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Lori on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Tom. How you doing? Great. I just wanted to weigh in on your pregnancy rant. Well, it wasn't so much yours. as Don't say weigh but... in and pregnancy in the same sentence. Seriously. I don't even want to tell you how much I weighed in at the end of my pregnancy. But that's neither here nor there. My, uh, I agree with the, the thought that you shouldn't have to do something for someone else. Um, I, you know, as, as being pregnant, not so much, you know, the issue as, I don't know, people that expect you to do something for them because they think they're better than you or because they think that they deserve it. I, I don't, I'm not down with that. I don't like that. I mean, like the person who turns right in front of you and they just look at you like, aren't you going to let me go? Or, you know, you have your reverse lights on and the person who just doesn't care to stop or break anymore. It's kind of like chivalry is dead anyway. And humanity killed it. Well, no, feminism killed chivalry. And uh, you know what? If women want equality, then chivalry should be dead. Yeah. I, the, the thing is, I don't think that all women would sit here and stare at you or ask you, like, um, excuse me, could you move? I'm pregnant. Oh, I don't, think, I don't think all women would either. Yeah, I but, know that But many, definitely. many would, or at least they would glare at you. Oh, God. Yeah, you're right. I know. And it's like I've been pregnant twice, and the person who stopped and held the door for me or the person who let me have the parking space because I was humongous or the person who might have let me sit in their seat in the waiting room, I would always, you know, I would think that that... I would very be very thankful because that just does not happen at all in this world. And I don't know. I just uh, I, I kind of agree with what you're saying. I mean, I think it sucks for the guy to say I wouldn't just because you're pregnant because then it's kind of unfair. It is unfair. But maybe, you, you know, I don't know. He might have had a bad experience with a pregnant woman for all I know. Well, if somebody wants to do it, they're entitled to do what they want. But uh, yeah. if women want equality, they should not expect these things. Right. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, I'm, from what you were talking about earlier, as far as the women, um, I know this is a totally different conversation, but I've never talked to you before. <laughs> um, earlier, we were talking about the women, how they want the money and the... They want the money and the fame and fortune, and they want the cars, and they want the house. And it just seems like the world, women, for the most part, are so extremely, unbelievably shallow. It's just like, it's just a joke. 
I mean, I don't know what you think about that, but when we're talking about the guys winning about girls want the money, and, and, and I think that that's like... Well, I think women want both. I think women want, quote-unquote, equality, mm -hmm. but they also want uh, to be treated special. Yeah. And I yeah. say you have to pick one or the other. Yeah. I'd go with special. <laughs> Most women went with but, equality, and they're, they're getting it from me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm in a relationship where we've been together for seven years. We don't have a lot of money, and I'd rather be happy with someone that I love than the the arm candy on the arm of some guy that, like, you know, I mean, he could give, you know, two you-know-whats about me or what I think, or I wouldn't be able to have a conversation. I mean, I just think that for the most part, it's just it's just sad how it is. I don't know. It's just sad. <laughs> Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Appreciate the call. Elric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, hello? Is that a question or a statement? Oh, hi, Tom. How are you doing? Great. Uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear my name. Um, I don't know. I, I, it's a matter of just courtesy. It's not a matter of a right, but it's like I give up my seat to see to him. What I'm makes that courteous? Excuse me? What makes that courteous? Well, I mean, it's just courtesy. But Tom, I'd give I'd give up my my seat to uh, to an old an old man. Does that make me a uh, feminist or that's a different? Excuse me. That's different. Uh, you, nobody asks to get old. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's something that no, happens I mean, to like, people. Well, go, go on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I said uh, nobody asks to get old. It, it's something that happens to people. Sure. No, uh, getting well, pregnant I mean, is different. a lifestyle choice. Sure. I'm, I'm just saying it's a courtesy thing. I mean, it's like I I like a lot of the things that you say. I mean, it's like, you know, this, this is I mean, this is one. I mean, where it's like, eh, you know, I mean, it's like it's just being selfish. You know, no, it's I not mean, being it's selfish. Like, women women have a sense of entitlement about things like this and they're not sure. entitled to them. Gotcha. But, I mean, it's like it, it, it's like uh, without being disrespectful, you sound pregnant. You, you sound like a pregnant person being selfish. You know, and what I'm just saying is like it's just a it's selfish. Thing. If I don't give up, I got there first. I paid the same fare as the other person. Uh huh. And I'm being selfish by insisting on getting the seat I paid for. Oh well, no! I mean, it's like uh, look. If I'm on a subway, if I'm on a subway and I, I get on there and I'm sitting down or whatever, I see some. It's like you know, I'm able-bodied. I you know, I I could you know, it's not going to kill me to stand up and it's like you know, to, to it's just a courtesy thing. That's what I mean. It's Why like, do you need to do it? Well, it's, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, why do you assume maybe, that pregnant I, women I, I, are so, why do you I mean, assume that, pre why do you assume, why do you assume that pregnant women are so frail that they need your courtesy? It's, a, you know, um, it, I could take it out off of the pregnancy thing. You could, uh, we could say it's an able-bodied man. I see Somebody pregnant women, at the, I, I see pregnant women, I, mean, I see pregnant there. women at the gym. Uh, sure. After they're at the gym working out, I should give them my seat on the bus. Um, if if it ain't gonna kill you, I don't, I don't see whether. Why should I do it? Up. I mean, but I, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a choice. What I'm just saying is like I know, but I don't know why you thing. you think I should do it, and you think I'm being selfish for not doing. I never said that. I would. Did yeah, I you that? did actually. You did it well. Um, I'm I'm just saying it's 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 a courtesy thing more than a chivalry thing. You know, it's like it wouldn't kill me to sit there and do it. I mean, it's like I guess why why I say that is because it's like like I said, I agree with a, with a lot of the stuff you say up until when it's like, well, women have been been this bad all all these years. Now is now is my turn. Women to women and demand an equality, and I give it to them. Sure. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm just, uh, it's, uh, I'm, I won't get into a debate with it. I'm just saying it's like, it's a courtesy thing. It has nothing to do with chivalry or anything, but I do open doors for women and stuff. I don't expect Why? to back. I don't expect a, a do it. Why do you do it? Just, uh, I was just taught to sit there and be, you know. It's like, you were taught that by somebody who grew up in another era. Uh, they, you know, courtesy is, uh, has nothing to do with what year you, you came in. Yeah, it's do you like hold doors open for men? Do you eight? hold doors open for men as much as you hold them open for women? No, you don't. Um, you know, Tom, that's wrong. I mean, it's like if I if, if somebody's like carrying, carrying stuff or whatever, I'll open it. it no, it, I didn't say. It, it, I said, it, do you hold it, doors it, open for men as much as you do women? And the true answer is no. Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, it's like, uh, of course I open a door. I, I mean, anytime if I'm walking in. I said, do you do it as much? Answer the question I'm asking, not the way you're trying to rewrite the question.
I, okay. Well, if a man is carrying 400 pounds of lumber, uh, yeah, I hold the door open. No. Do you hold the door open for men as much as for women? And the answer is no, you don't. Uh, correct. It's I sexist. It's sexist. I was just taught that way. You, know, well, I mean, you were taught that way by somebody who grew up in another it's era. It's you, were taught, you were taught by people who, uh, who, who believe that a woman should make dinner for her husband. You were taught by people who believe that when a man comes home from work, he's the king of the castle. Uh, oh, that that era doesn't exist anymore. I, I, got, I mean, I, I would, that part, I would agree with you because it's like none of my girlfriends, none of my girlfriends ever could cook. That's my point. You know, but I mean, it's like, but yeah, I mean, it's like, I, you know, something. I, I mean, it's, it's another it's, you know, era. Sure. Well, I mean, it, but it's like uh, chivalry could be dead or whatever. It's dead in the eye of the beholder as far as a way of life. It should whatever, be dead it's like, because it's sexist. Um, uh, that's sexist. I of course mean, it is. It's, 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 you like, just said you hold, hold the door open, open for more women than for men. Sure, but I mean, Why do women say, deserve to have their door held open more often than men do? I, and, because you're well, a sexist. I mean, it's, like, uh, it's, it's like I said, I do it as a courtesy thing. And why why like, don't you uh, give yes, courtesy to men that you give to women? Why don't What's you that? give the same courtesy to men that you do to women? Well, I, Tom, I mean, it's like uh, if if you if you're going to ask lawyer type questions, where it's a yes. It's not no, lawyer type I, I mean, questions. I'm asking. You ask me, listen, Tom. You ask me before. You are trying to avoid for women than men. The you, answer is yes. Yes. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Do I open it for men? If it, if, if if only if, if they're carrying a lot of stuff. Other than that, no. Well, I mean, it's like or in general. I mean, it's like if I'm walking into a building or whatever. You think the little ladies I'm can't open, open the door? Sometimes I, I. It's like if I'm going into an elevator, I allow everybody, men. That's and not women, what I asked you. Nothing to do with anything. I didn't bring up elevators. No, no, I'm bringing up an elevator. You can bring up a door. You can bring up a window, whatever. I mean, what I'm, I'm talking is, about where physical labor is required. You assume the little ladies are too delicate to hold their own door open. And so you hold it open more for women than for men. That's why you sure. do it. But I mean, it's like, why that, do you I mean, assume that? Your second, your, your second question to me, well, do you open it for men too as well? I, I open it and it's not like, as often. You already admit often, that. Tom, those those are questions where it's like it's like they're they're brought all the way across. But my my your your first question to me: Do I open it more for women? Yes. Why? Do I, I mean, would I? Open Why? It for, for, for Why? Do it out of Why? I do it out of courtesy. Well, do courtesy. Why well, don't but men like courtesy? I like courtesy. Why? Why would you give that courtesy to a woman and not a man? I saw you. If I saw you, and um, I mean, it's like what if you didn't know it was me? I mean, it's like because you, you, you just said, said you'd be more likely it. to hold the door open for a woman. I would open it for you. You just said you'd be more likely to hold it open for a woman than for a man. You said that. Why? Yes, I said yes. Why would you give that courtesy to a woman and not a man? Sure. Can I answer your? Please answer the specific question I'm asking. Yes. Um, it's like when you asked me that question at first, the answer is yes. But I mean, and you told me it's like, look, just answer the question. It's like I answered your question. I do open it more for women. Why? And I do it as a cur I do it as a courtesy. Why? Do, why? And why do women that. deserve more courtesy than men? Um, um, why not? I mean, it's like why not, not is not an answer. I, you know something? I, I mean, it's because like, women I, are equal. They want to be treated I'm equally, equal. and and to treat uh, men and women uh, unequally is to be a sexist. Tom, it's like I open it. I open it for for uh, African Americans. I open it for for. Uh, and I didn't ask about know, race. I'm talking Chinese about people. gender. This mean? has nothing I mean, to do like with race. Can... We're talking about gender here. I mean, I and I you mean, already admitted you're a sexist. Yeah. You already admitted to being a sexist because you said that you hold the door open for women more than for men. And your excuse is that it's a courtesy, as if men don't need courtesy. Um, Tom, you asked me if I if you you're you're pinning me over onto one side. When I told when I told you when you said it's like answer the question one way or the other. Don't, do this has nothing to do with my technique or methodology for answering anyway. questions. You are trying to avoid the truth, and the truth is you hold the door open more for women because you're a sexist who believes the little lady can't open her own door. I mean, I've rubbed it there. I'll go change a tire for a woman like on, 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 on the bed on the Why? I've done that before. Why not? Because it's, like, the, you know, it's called AAA. Look into it. I, <laughs> that's funny. 
I don't, uh, what happens if, if a man is uh, disabled or whatever? I mean, it's like... Uh, We're not talking about disabled it. people here. Uh, Let's, here. Uh, apples I to have... apples, please. Apples to apples, please. We're not talking about disabled people here. We're talking about able-bodied individuals who happen to be of different genders. Here, Tom, this will answer your question on gender and on everything, but and you you put it wherever you want. You would random stop to change kindness, a tire for a woman? Kindness. Tom, Tom, allow me to They're speak. not random. No, random Tom, acts Tom. of kindness means they would be equally likely to happen to a man or a woman. These are not yes, random please. acts of kindness. These are targeted to particular genders. Sure, Tom, allow me to finish my, my one statement. Then, you, I mean, it is your show. Don't tell me how to do the show. Time. I've been doing it without your help for a long time I know that. and I very successfully things. without your advice. Gotcha. I, I understand. I won't I listen to the program director. Why would I listen to you? Sure. I, I'm just saying random acts of kindness doesn't kill anybody. Okay. Yeah, they're not it, random. It really kills they're people. not it's random. Like you you check not you, you know, because you check the plumbing before you perform an act of kindness. That's not random. These no, are Tom, these are true. demographically targeted acts of kindness targeted at females. Okay, but Tom, listen. When I when if I was to, if, when I told you I open it for both, but you're the one who sat there and went. No, you said you, you do it more for, for women, women than men. men. Who's pigeonholing it? What I'm use and you I said, oh yeah, if a man is carrying something heavy, oh well, then I'd hold the door open for him. But but no, no, a man I'm, has I'm, to be carrying something heavy, that, but a woman that, that, doesn't. I was using that as an example. I mean, like I said today, I you I, know there I, are men who don't have to change their own tire, but you wouldn't stop for them. Tom, I opened up the door for some random businessman who was able-bodied enough to open a door. I'm not saying you've never done it. You just said you do it more for women than for men. Sure. I mean, but, I mean, it's like that's, I mean, but, I'm just saying random acts of kindness don't They're not random. Random means you do it without regard to gender, race, or anything else. You do it with regard to gender. Uh, Tom, if you, if I came, if, if somebody came up and a woman happened to be like coming up uh, right after you or whatever, I'd open the door for you. It's like, and what does that mean? That's not, that's not does my that point. Mean that I'm sexist? You said no. you do it more for women than for men. That no. is sexist. Okay, well, I'm, wow, then I am sexist and proud of it. And I know, know people, I know men who don't know how to change their own spare time, but you wouldn't stop for them. You'd stop no, for the I'm little just, lady no, in distress. You would Tom, stop for the I, delicate little flower. But the man who doesn't know how to change a spare tire, you would just assume a man should know how to do that, and you would stop for a woman who needs uh, to have her tire changed. Well, I mean, you know something? There was somebody that called you up before and was, like, ripping into you and everything, and I was thinking it's like... Like, you know, people are going to do what people are going to do. See, and, and this, is, this is a typical specious argument when you don't have a response to start critiquing the way I do my work. No, no, no. I wasn't critiquing. Oh, yes, you were. I was trying to sit there and tell you. Yes, no, no, you no, no. were. I was trying to tell you when somebody was calling you. Yes, you were. Uh, well, what, then what, I, how I, I, who what I, I said to other callers and how I do my job has nothing to do with the answers to these questions. Sure. Yeah, no problem. But anyways, listen, Tom. Hold on a second. Uh, Rocco, uh, Rocco, what did you want to say to Elric here? This guy needs his balls reattached. Honestly, who does random acts of kindness nowadays? Nobody. Honestly, anybody who listens to this show never does random acts of kindness, ever. Hmm. Well, uh, honestly, I will reattach honestly, him. I, what, I had to take him you need your balls reattached or something? Him. Honestly, come on. What's that? Honestly, who else are you going to give your, your parking space to? Honestly. My parking space? Yeah, who else are you going to give it to? My part. Um, <laughs> my part. I got a handicapped parking space. So it's. Like, you are uh, a handicapped dude, and you need your balls reattached, honestly. Okay. I'll wait, wait, wait. Him. Are you disabled, Elric? Uh, well, um, yeah, I got a knee injury. Fascinating. So here you are. You're disabled, but uh, you you perform sexist acts of kindness by by holding doors open. Even though you're disabled, you hold doors open for women, but not men. Because I'm not that disabled. Little Timmy I mean, needs a new like, wheelchair. I am disabled. I mean, it's like, but I mean, it's like it doesn't mean that. I mean, it's like I can't sit there and do something for my fellow man. That if that's if that's having my balls uh, removed or whatever, so be it. It's like. There's, I mean, it's like you know, there's too, but there's too much selfishness going on in 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 the world on um, both male and female. Yeah, it's but like, uh, you're perfectly okay with female selfishness. It's the male selfishness you have a problem with. 
No, not at all. Because, like I said, it's like uh, I I listen to the show avidly and stuff, and it's like I do like you know a lot of the things you say. This is one I just disagree with. Doesn't mean that it's like all of a sudden it's like you're an a hole or something. You're not. You know? Oh no, it's I like, am an a hole. It's a point of view. Oh, well, I, I, I am an a hole. It's like, and that's no problem. But either way, Tom. I mean, it's like, listen. You guys have a have a. I'm going back to listen to the show and turn my my radio on and stuff. But you guys have a good day. All right. Now Rick is uh, running off, running off to hide behind some woman's skirt. There you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Lucy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, um, Tom. Oh, did you want to talk to Tom? Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Anyway, um, well, my mom's a doctor, and she said other doctors she worked with would start putting women who are pregnant for like seven weeks. They'd give them bed rest, and I think that's ridiculous. I don't think that women should be babied, like, if they're, I don't know, two months pregnant. But obviously, if they're, like, nine months pregnant, probably, and they're panting, and they look like they're about to go into labor, I mean, hey, why not give them their... What are they doing on the subway? That's a good question. But I think that maybe... If they, if they, if they have enough strength to get on the subway, mm -hmm. to take the escalator all the way down to the station, <laughs> uh -huh. to wait for the train, mm -hmm. then they've got enough energy to stand if there's no seats. Yeah. That's, I guess that, that's true, but hey, they're carrying probably like 50 pounds, and if you're some able- Whose fault that, is that? I guess it's their fault. But not our problem. doesn't mean they, have, they don't have to carry it. It's not our problem. I guess that's not your problem. I, I think that though, it's, it is nice for common courtesy. I mean, if I saw a guy, even if he was just a normal guy, and I was feeling fine, he looked like he was tired, I'd let him sit down. I don't think it's particularly sexist. But I think it is kind of sexist if you aren't going to do it for, like, basically any guy. Well, people very rarely do that. Even yeah. though you might do it, people very rarely do. Well, I do it. For example, I go to France every summer. Well, it's not I the Lucy it. show, okay? This is the, the Tom Likas show. And we're talking about a broad audience of broads like yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, I think even when I'm doing that and there are men, if I see a guy that's 50 years old, I mean, I'm 21. I let the guy sit down. I think that... You should, you should basically just let anyone who has an issue, and even though it's not your fault, be nice. But you don't think most people are like that, do you? Like the last <laughs> caller, the last caller, he that. does it for women. That I think that's nice. I don't think it's nice. I think it's sexist. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's sexist in a good way. I mean, no, it's, it's not. In bad sex. So if he saw a tired man walking up, mm -hmm. he'd make that man stand while a woman who's four months pregnant with a little baby bump could sit down. I think he seems like the type of person who would let an old man sit down. I don't think that he'd make the old man sit up either, stand up either, because he knows what it feels like. Because he's already, well, he's already disabled, so he'd probably know what it would feel like, and he'd let the old man sit down. You don't think he would? I don't think so. Well, that's good to know. I think he's George McFly. Ooh. You've never seen the movie Back to the Future. I think that's who that is. I don't know. I didn't see the movie Back to the Future. No, it's on TV McFly. all the time. Yeah, that That's who he is. Okay. That's, well, when I envision that. what that guy looks like, that's what I envision. Mm, good to know. Yeah. Yep. Well, right. I I think that if the woman is, like, panting and looks like she's about to go into labor, just say, ma'am, can I help you? Do you need me to call an ambulance and then let her sit down until the ambulance gets there? Other than that, if she's like, if she has a baby bump, I'm... Ho hum. Th these on. are not my problems. Exactly. All right. Well, thank you for that. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. What was that again? Were you not listening to me, sir? I couldn't hear a word you were saying. Well, I couldn't hear a word that you were saying either. I see. That's great. I like the level of discourse here. It's fantastic. It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> It's the Tom Likas Show from Hollywood at 1-800-5800-TOM. Hey, listen, hey, Brian wrote in and said he was called an a-hole. He's happy about it. He thanked me. Credited me being called an a-hole because a female friend of his, who is pregnant, was talking about being on a train a few weeks ago. Said she was forced to stand because no one would give up their seat. He said he wouldn't have done it either. She called him an a-hole. 
<laughs> 1-800-5-800-TOM is our telephone number. Jonathan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, got a problem with uh, the toilet seat. I know this comes up a lot, but, you know, I'm thinking when we go to the bathroom, we lift so we don't pee in a toilet seat. Why can't they put it down so they can sit down? Why do we always have to do both? I don't, I don't get it. Is it that heavy? Did I need help lifting it uh, or putting it down? they got to give me a little help with that. Uh, my wife's not only riding me, but riding my 11-year-old son. <laughs> well, uh, leaving the seat up or down, the, the seat should be put into place uh, by the person who's using it. Where do you need it to be? Put it there. It's like the uh, refrigerator door. It would be like somebody saying the refrigerator door should be left open in case I come by and I need something out of the refrigerator. <laughs> exactly. The, the door is closed, and then when someone needs something, the door is open. That's how it works. I know, I know, but why don't why is this continually uh, an issue? I don't get it. I don't know. Is it, how does it not get through? Ugh. It's part of women, uh, the, the, the usual uh, male bashing that goes on in this country. It's yeah. part of what has gone on since feminism, uh, you know, ruined everything for everybody. And uh, my attitude about it is anybody who uh, tells me they don't like my toilet seat habits, they can hit the road. Yeah, I intentionally try to PM it sometimes. So. I like that. <laughs> and, and I never replace the toilet paper, so I don't know. It, it's just maybe they just, I don't know. Uh, I intentionally take the last sheet of toilet paper, too, so that she has the end. Yeah, I don't know. We've got to retaliate somehow and maybe get through. What, else, what do you suggest besides... Peeing on the seat and, and finishing the last of the. Don't just say don't. I, I don't want to talk about this subject. Don't even bring it up. <laughs> I, 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 I'm not even going to. I'm not even going to discuss this. If you <laughs> want the subject. seat, if you yeah. want the seat down, put it down. All right, you're right. I know it seems obvious, right? All right By the that. way, technically, it takes a lot more effort to put it to take it up than to put it down. Exactly. Down is easy. Just slow it down. You don't actually have to exert any energy, I think. Right. Exactly. All right, Tom. You're the best. Thank you very much. Jonathan, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Here is Jared on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Jared, long-time listener. Hey. Love you. love your show, Dad. Thank you, son. I calling about the... Uh, Crippled, impaired, disabled people, man. My old man's been disabled for years. Ever since he was four, he's born with polio in a wheelchair. And, you know, we catch people every now and then at the Cracker Barrel local restaurant, like opening the door for them, holding the door. You know, it's a kind gesture, but, you know, you can see in their back of their mind that they really don't care, you know. And, uh... If it was me, I'd do it. But uh, when it comes to a pregnant woman, you know, somebody that's just fat and lazy, cruise around the hum around at a Walmart parking lot, you know, I ain't about to open nothing for them. They can get their own way. If they can push a button, they can drive it themselves, open their own door. If they can go to Walmart and they can buy themselves a 14-pound bag of Doritos... You got it. They buddy. can lift it and put it into the uh, trunk of their SUV. Right on, man. My old man's been disabled. Like I said, he's got polio since he was like four years old. He's never asked anybody, never asked anything. He's walked around on crutches. In the past few years, he's been crippled and disabled or he has to use a wheelchair. And, you know, he's never asked for a handout, never asked to be treated any different. Other right. Than, you know, to, to see these just fat, lazy people that just... Now that Walmart has the offerings of a lazy hover round to get you around the stinking parking lot and through the grocery store to buy your damn 20-pound bag of chips and your Doritos and your burritos and your taco pies, you know, I think we ought to flatten their tires and make their lazy butts walk. Thank you, Jared, for that. 1-800-5800-TOM. Chris is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. How you doing tonight, brother? Yes. Good. Hey, listen, I uh, I love you. I think you're great. I take your advice. I've used your advice. But I'm going to have to disagree with you and some of your callers. I don't think that there is anything wrong with giving up your seat for 
a pregnant woman or opening the door for a lady. I've uh, always agreed with you in so many respects. And I tell you, one of the things a long time ago I listened to was the way you look at finances. And I tell you, I've succeeded in life from a lot of those things. But you will not succeed in life if you can't give it up for someone. No, I've been succeeding in life for years without giving up seats for women. I There's no need to do that. Well, what's in it for me? But it's the it's perception. I guarantee you. When, what do uh, I the, care what some complete stranger's perception is of me? It, it helps you succeed in life, brother. And no, it, are, no, it doesn't. Hey, specifically, specifically how? Because you're the exception. You talk about we talk vast majorities, and the vast majority of guys out there are never going to achieve what you've achieved. I want to know with. specifically how they will benefit from giving up their seat. By giving up your seat, by treating people the way you like to be treated, you set yourself up for success. I'm a business owner. I do very well. I vacation all over the world. And I'll tell you something. Everywhere I go, I treat people the right way. I give people a smile, a handshake. I tip well. I do everything I need to do. And you know what? It's benefited me time and time again. Again, I tip people. I treat people well. But I treat people equally. Oh, absolutely. I, and like, Women do not deserve special treatment. No, I think I think personally, Tom, I think everyone deserves our very best every single day. I think everyone, whether it's a woman, I've stopped and helped guys change tires on the side of the road. I've done that before. I treat people the way I like to be treated. And I think the vast majority of the guys that call in, like Rocco, telling Elric to get his balls back, Rocco's probably too much of a pussy to ever stand up and do something nice for someone because he's so afraid that people might look at him and not realize he's not a man. He can't be a man because he's doing something nice. I think it takes a real man to stand up and do the right thing. And there's right things and there's wrong things. I think giving your seat up to a woman is not the right thing. Well, it's not the wrong thing either. I don't just don't think it's right. It's sexist. I don't think it's okay. I understand where you come from when you say it's sexist, and I think it, it just boils down to treating people, not just women, but treating people right. There's but nothing. Wrong. But, but why never... do women deserve better treatment than men? Oh, I don't think that women do. Well, think... you you say you give your seat up to a lady. I would. I would also give why? it up to a man. I'd give it up to you because you're older than me, bro. So you'd give it up to anyone. If if I saw that there was a need, whether that need is her choice of being pregnant... Then why would you that, assume that somebody who's pregnant needs a seat? Well, I wouldn't assume it, but you and I are both intelligent enough humans to know if there really is a need or well, not. Well, as I have said, uh, I see women at the gym all the time who are pregnant. All the time. And uh, what, when I see that person on the subway leader, I'm going to give them my seat? Hell no. Melanie on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello? Yes. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? Great. Good. I love your show. I'm driving home. I just wanted to respond to the caller that talked about the toilet seat. I'm 30 years old, and I have such a pet peeve about the toilet seat, and I am changed. He made a believer out of me. I never thought about the fact that guys have to touch it to lift it up, so why do they have to put it back down, too? It's absolutely true. I love your show, and I, I am changed. I will not comment on the toilet seat any longer. I love that. <laughs> you know, when you, when, you, uh, <laughs> when you use a public bathroom, and there's more and more of these unisex bathrooms now, uh, you know, like small restaurants have one bathroom or whatever, um, you put the seat wherever you need it to be. Absolutely. I never thought about that. You guys have to touch it to put it up. So even Stephen, as far as I'm concerned. I like that. It took 30 years, but I thank you, and I'll keep listening. Thank you, Melanie. Thank you. Bye-bye. Appreciate the call. Here's Debbie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? Great. Good. Um, I just want to say that I am a mother of four, never expected anybody to give me their seat, and I wouldn't give any pregnant woman my seat because, you know what, they're not handicapped and they're not disabled, and it was their choice. And it drives me nuts for these women that get these parking spots at malls now because they're pregnant. Give me a break. I think uh, that pregnant women need a little more uh, cardiovascular activity. I do believe your doctor tells you to exercise. Yep, I think you're right about that. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com.
The Tom Likas Show.